Well, there we have it. The fastest processor on the planet. Last year, we had IDC conduct a bit of a, a research for us um, worldwide. And these are the numbers they threw back at us. And this kind of illustrates uh, what people are doing with their PCs, be it desktop or mobile, today as we see it. And no surprises here on the board, I'm sure, for any of you. We can see communication is still top of the pops, communication and email, uh, all the, the social networking going on these days, the Facebooks, the YouTubes, etc. So, the, so that's a majority of the, of the vote. Then gaming platforms. The PC is still the biggest gaming platform out there, just because of the vast number of PCs uh, in the consumer space. It is absolutely still the biggest gaming platform out there. Then editing personal digital media, yes, those uh, holiday videos, editing uh, that normally takes place in January and gets posted to YouTube, never want to see there. That's happening. And then listening to music. I mean, just this weekend I had a, a bri at my place and some friends over, not that I can remember much of the evening, but we had the music playing outside uh, from iTunes playing off my PC to a set of speakers outside of the veranda. Right? So, so that's a common usage model today, I think. And then watching digital videos. Just think about having multiple monitors connected to your PC and watching a Blu-ray DVD or Blu-ray video on the one monitor while doing that uh, very important email on the other monitor or getting your spreadsheet sent out to those who, who need to see it. So these are, are the types of usage models that's driving the industry today. What is the decision-making process in a new buyer or a refresh buyer when they come to purchasing a new PC? Number one, it is absolutely still performance. Performance drives our industry. Now the PC can be as green as it wants, as blue as it wants, as green as it wants. It is still supposed to perform. That's the end of the day. That's the decision maker. That's what, what gets the, the customer to buy. Uh, new features, yes. Um, more storage, just upgrade your current machine. But buying a new PC, it's all about performance. And then why decide on a desktop PC over a notebook. Now we've seen the notebook industry absolutely ramp in phenomenal numbers over the past few few quarters especially where there's been one or two quarters that the mobile or the notebook numbers have actually outsold the PC or the desktop. But there's still a huge demand for desktop PCs and why is uh, why are the people still deciding on going for the PC instead of a, a notebook or a laptop? Number one again, performance. It's all about the numbers, performance. Throwing more uh, engine power at the problem. So that's, that's what it's all about. Now, I've got my friend here, Kamal, and we've been doing this little road show over the past few weeks, and him and I always have this little tiff about when you pimp your ride, you don't start with the sound uh, or the exhaust, you normally start with the engine. So, so Kamal likes to pimp the sound first, but it's all about the performance, right? So we get the engine right first, and then we take it from there. And as you can see on the screen, we have some world record breaking numbers. Again. We see the, the integer rate numbers as well as the floating point numbers. Some phenomenal new world records established on a single socket PC. Now, what do we use all this firepower for? Well, this, this massive engine, what is it used for today? Um, be more creative. Those home movies having to be edited, those high def uh, renders of your, your still photos, overlaying some music into that, uploading that into YouTube, sharing it amongst your friends. Then immersive gaming. Now, huge market. Now, we've been perceived as Intel as not actually taking the lead in this industry, and that all changed with the launch of Core 2 Deo and Core 2 Quad. This new architecture that we brought to market uh, based on the 65 nanometer platform just revolutionized the gaming industry for us. And we didn't stop yeah, there. We've taken it one step further, and it's not a step, it is a giant leap forward in performance when it comes to uh, artificial intelligence and um, physics rendering on the new gaming platform. But it doesn't stop there. We work with a whole bunch of vendors, be it um, uh, the gaming side or office automation side, that we actually help them get their applications multi-thread aware and in that process develop our platform alongside these vendors. On the multitasking side, absolutely, it's not just all fun and games. Some work has to be done as well. Uh, and we can see absolutely from our own internal local uh, benchmarks, anything from about a 6% performance increase on the low side up to a 59% 
performance benefit going from our current generation uh, Core 2 Deo, Core 2 Quad to the new Core i7. Some of the, the names that I mentioned earlier on the new uh, independent software vendors, these are the people that we are working with and there are hundreds, literally hundreds more that we enable going forward on our current platform. So these are a few of the numbers and more than a hundred thousand processes already shipped out of our fabs uh, in the past week for production into more than 500 different vendors OEM systems. Now this is OEM systems that does not include local integrators like our local channel players at all. So 500 big names worldwide in over 70 countries that have adopted these systems. A few of the names. So what's actually under the bonnet here? What's going on that makes this such a fantastic product? So taking a step back, we'll see the, the, uh, the TikTok model. We've spoken about this before, but the whole thing about refresh and cycles, uh, taking a step back to Pentium 4 days. Pentium 4 was around for about between four, four and a half, maybe even five years. That was the architecture lifespan, about four and a half years. So yes, we got caught napping, make no mistake, but we absolutely put measures in place not to drop the ball again. And this was job number one, get the TikTok model going. To put it in short, the tick is a shrink of the die making things smaller. When you make things smaller, you make them faster, more power efficient, uh, and, and more performance. And then we've got the TOC, where we actually change the microarchitecture. It is a bottoms up redesign of the processor from scratch. And that happens every single year. So we started with Marone, based on the 65 nanometer platform. We then shrunk that down to 45 nanometer uh, a year ago. And last week we launched Core i7. Now Core i7 is also based on the 45 nanometer platform. And going forward next year into Q3, Q4 timeframe, that's where we will see the shrink down again to 32 nanometers when we launch uh, Linfield and then later on Havendale, based on the, the same architecture, microarchitecture. Just a few of the things we want to call out is uh, eight threads from a four-core system. So, so this brings back what we like to call simultaneous multi-threading. Um, we used to call it hyper-threading, but who likes to keep things simple, right? So we like to, to baffle the, the boys out there a bit and, and confuse some people. So we just changed the name from hyper-threading to simultaneous multi-threading. Same thing. So we're taking four cores, adding a, a hyper-threading core to it, hence eight threads. In a nutshell, once again, four cores if the application or the operating system is not multi-threaded aware and only two of those cores are working, you've got some headroom in the power and the, uh, and the heat aspect. So, so when it's not running at 100% utilization in those two cores while the other cores are sleeping, we actually dynamically overclock those two to get greater performance, up to two speed bins, greater performance on those active cores. Okay, so that's uh, the turbo mode. Then the quick path interconnects. Remember the, the front side bus, the North Bridge, all techie jargon, the 800 megahertz, 1066, 1333 megahertz front side bus, all gone. So we're going from 1.3 gigatransactions per second that we used to get from the, from the old front side bus up to an entry level 4.6 gigatransactions now utilizing quick path interconnect with the integrated memory controller. That is the entry level, is 4.6 gigatransactions per second, and then on the, on the higher SKUs, up to a 6.4 gigatransactions per second. Now, if we take a look at memory bandwidth, that absolutely quadruples what we could have done with memory throughput bandwidth in our previous technology, our previous bandwidth. And that is still twice as much as the competition can do that's been doing uh, integrated memory controllers for the past few years. Now, with this new technology, and new chipsets come a new socket. So it's no longer LJ775, we're going to a 1366 LJ socket, a little bit bigger. And then uh, the power remains the same, so, so no change in the power consumption. So much more performance using the same power. Records, it's all about the records, numbers again. A few world records tumbled here. Take a look at uh, 3D Mark Vantage, PC Mark Vantage, uh, world records across the board for single socket uh, systems.